notes and our energy flow unit. And we're going to be talking about energy flow through ecosystems. So I really think this concept is important because we're going to look at big picture, how energy travels through different organisms. And then in concept four and five, we're going to specifically talk about the processes of photosynthesis and cellular respiration that are making this energy flow happen. So we're going to start a big picture to give you some big picture context, and then we'll zoom in and look at the details and future concepts. So... All energy on Earth comes from the sun. If the sun isn't here, then Earth will not be able to function. So, how do we get that energy? If it's in the sun, how do we get it? Because you can't just go outside and sunbathe and absorb energy and be fine. So that's what we're going to talk about in this concept, is how that energy from the sun flows through different organisms in an ecosystem in order to get to you and other living things. So, there's basically two ways of getting energy. You can be a producer, or which is also known as an autotroph. Auto means self. Troph refers to nourishment. So producers are self-nourishers, meaning they can make their own food from non-living sources. So when I say make your own food, I don't mean like go into a kitchen and make a sandwich for yourself. I mean that their actual bodies create food for themselves, which you can't do. Um, they ca Most majority of producers, they capture their energy during photosynthesis and then they make simple sugars. But there's other processes too we'll talk about in a minute. Producers or autotrophs are, are organisms like plants, algae, and even some bacteria. The other way you can get your energy is by being a consumer, also known as a heterotroph. Hetero is a prefix for other, Again, troph means nourishment. So heterotrophs get nourishment from other things. They get their energy from living things or once living organisms. Examples, animals, humans, fungus, etc. We eat basically in order to get our energy that we need. So first let's talk about how producers get their energy. They either do photosynthesis or chemosynthesis. So synthesis refers to make. Photo is referring to light. So photosynthesis means we're making food from light. Chemosynthesis, we're making food from chemicals. Okay, both of these processes use non-living sources for energy. So they're making food and energy sources from non-living things. Photosynthesis source of energy is sunlight. Chemosynthesis is using chemicals or, um, or it's using, you know, elements and things found in sulfur-rich sulfur -rich salt marsh. Excuse me. As a tongue twister. Examples of organisms that do photosynthesis are green plants and cyanobacteria. Um, examples for chemosynthesis are like deep sea vent bacteria do this, but either way, they do they make their own food. So if I ever ask you in an assessment what kind of organisms are producers, don't just tell me plants. Bacteria are producers also, or can be producers also. Now, consumers get their energy in several different ways. We're going to be eating, and we're going to be taking what we eat, those macromolecules, and breaking them down inside of us to release ATP, because that's our usable energy form, and that's happening in cellular respiration in our mitochondria. And there's four types of consumers, though, that are going to be doing this process, okay? You're either an herbivore, meaning you eat only vegetation, and then you take that vegetation and break it down during cellular respiration to release ATP. You're a carnivore, meaning you eat only meat, you're an omnivore, meaning you eat meat and vegetation, or you're a detrivore, um, or another, which is another word for a decomposer, which means you're basically scavenging or eating dead or decaying materials. Um, so these are kind of the four types of consumers, but all four of these are doing or taking what they eat, breaking down it down, and releasing ATP and cellular respiration to be used by their cells. All right, so there's this great video on YouTube you need to watch. Um, so you can pause this or watch at the end. It's called Flight of the Dung Beetle. So um, unless you obviously have the PowerPoint, you can't click on this link. But um, you can Google Flight of the Dung Beetle. It's a BBC Earth video clip. It's like 2 minutes and 30 seconds. Um, it's a great little video clip, though, of a real-world ecosystem. And so I want you to watch it. I want you to jot down producers and consumers and then see if you can even label those consumers as herbivores, omnivores, carnivores, or detrivores, um, just as a little practice.
All right, and then we're going to talk about food chains. A food chain traces a single flow of energy, and it shows trophic levels. And trophic levels are the levels of nourishment in a food chain. So here's an example of a food chain. Um, we have grass, and the arrows show where the energy is going. So grass is being eaten by grasshoppers. So the energy is going from grass into the grasshopper. Grasshoppers are eaten by mice or a mouse, so energy is flowing into the mouse. And then the mouse will be eaten by an owl, so energy is flowing into the owl. That's showing a food, a single flow of energy in a food chain. Now the rule of 10, as energy is flowing from organism to organism, it's being used for metabolism of an organism and or it's being converted to heat. So because of this, the next organism on the chain is only really getting 10% of the energy from the previous level. So the other 90% is either being used or it's being lost as heat. We don't say lost because energy can never be created or destroyed. It's only transferred, but it's, it's being changed into form. So if the grass is a producer, it has 100% of the energy that it obtains available to, to be used. But when the grasshopper eats the grass, the grasshopper only is a able to get 10% of that original energy because 90% of the energy is being used by the grass or lost as heat in, in, in metabolism. Then that grasshopper gets eaten by the mouse. The mouse only gets 10% of that grasshopper. So we're, it's 10% each time. All right, we mentioned trophic levels, which are levels of nourishment, but now I want to show you that more clearly. So... Grass in this food chain is on the first trophic level, the first level of nourishment. And the first level of nourishment is always producers. The grasshopper is the second level, the second level of nourishment or trophic level. And those are always primary consumers. They are the first consumers. So it's a little confusing because it's the second level, but it's a first consumer. But make sure you keep that in mind. All right, what do you think of mouse is? It's level three, and it's a secondary consumer because it's the second consumer in the chain. The owl's level four, and it's a tertiary consumer. Anything above an owl would be the next level is a level five, and it's a quaternary consumer. And we can go on and on and on and on. But that's how you see trophic levels in a food chain. And again, energy is flowing this direction. All right, can you classify each type of consumer? So the grasshopper, if it eats grass, it must be in herbivore. The mouse, if it eats a grasshopper, it's a carnivore, and then the owl eating the mouse is a carnivore. We can't tell an omnivore from this food chain. All right, now food web, a little bit more complicated. It's just showing multiple food chains at once and how they interconnect. So in this food web, we have a food chain of grass to beetle to bird to owl. That's one food chain. Well, we could go grass, grasshopper, bird, owl. Or we could go grass, grub, mouse, owl. Or we could go grass, mouse, owl. So we have all these different food chains in one food web. So it's showing how they interconnect. But again, notice the energy is still flowing in one direction. Producers are still the base of this. Then we kind of got those higher level consumers at the top. We can transfer this to a trophic pyramid. This is just a model that's going to show how energy flows through an ecosystem. And there's three different types of trophic pyramids that you'll see, and then I'll show you an example, and I think that'll really help you understand. But a trophic pyramid could be an energy pyramid. It could simply show the amount of energy available at each trophic level. Remember, it's always going to get smaller as you go because of the rule of 10, which is why we have trophic pyramids are in a pyramid shape for a reason. The base has the most energy available, which is why it's the widest. The top has the least energy available, which is why it's the narrowest. So energy pyramid would just show like the amount of calories of energy that are available. A numbers pyramid is actually going to show the number of organisms at each trophic level. So in order for an ecosystem to be balanced and to be stable, we should have the most amount of producers and the least amount of high level consumers. So again, still fitting that energy pyramid. That's how it should work out perfectly if it's a stable ecosystem. And then last is a biomass pyramid. This will actually show the total mass of living organic matter at each trophic level. So it could show you how many kilograms of producers there are in that first level, how many kilograms of primary consumers are in the second level. And again, for a stable ecosystem, it should be getting smaller and smaller each higher level in order to stay balanced. All right, so here's an example of that food chain we saw earlier. 
All right, grass would be at the bottom of the pyramid, and then grasshopper, and then mouse, and then owl. Again, the pyramid shape shows that grass should be my most common organism, and it has the most energy available. Owl should be my least common, and it has the least amount of energy available. All right, if we want to label the trophic level numbers, I'm going to do that in blue. We start at the bottom. We would go one, two, three, four. The trophic level names, I'm going to label in pink. Remember, it's producer, primary consumer, secondary consumer, and then tertiary consumer. And then if I want to show the percentage of energy available, I'm going to show that in green. Remember, grass is a producer, so 100% of the energy that it obtains is available to it. Now, rule of 10, the grasshopper only gets 10% of that, which is 10%. Now, the mouse only gets 10% of 10, which is 1%. The owl gets 10% of 1%, which is 0.1%. So it's really just moving the decimal one place each time as it goes upward. All right, and that is energy flow through the ecosystems. And we're going to do a lot of practice with this. This is not a hard concept. We should do a little bit of practice to make sure that you really get the food webs and trophic pyramids. So we're going to do a bunch of that in class.